Welcome to the Heart Factory. Hi, today's video is about the way one has to handle the saphenous venous graft after it has been harvested. Now, as we know, the saphenous venous graft has gone into a lot of disrepute because of its patency rate. Say, the quoted rates in the literature are about 80% plus at the end of 10 years, as against the mammary artery, which is around 95% plus at the end of 10 years. Now, what's the problem with the saphenous venous graft? Now, the, the quoted reasons for the poor patency rates vary from the way you harvest it, the way you handle it after harvesting, and the way you respect the intima at the time of grafting. Now, the last video I showed you the technique of harvesting the saphenous venous graft without much damage or without touching it. It's not the classical no-touch technique, but I can call it the self-nice way of harvesting the saphenous venous graft without much damage or without any damage to the vein though I can claim that only by uh, microscopic examination but we are giving more importance to the way we are handling the vein that was in the last video now this video will deal with uh, what has to be done after the vein has been harvested now the first point is always look for the avulsions any small branches that have been avulsed from the main vein so they will look like small holes they may not bleed as of now, but they will definitely bleed under arterial pressure. So handle them with monofilament proline, say 7 of proline. Make sure you take only the adventitia and uh, close the hole in such a way that you are not obstructing or narrowing the lumen of the vein. The second thing is adventitial constrictions. Always remove the adventitial constrictions by means of box scissors because adventitial constrictions will cause narrowing of the vein and wherever there is narrowing of the vein there will be turbulence and those points of turbulence will lead to stenosis in the long run. So you have to remove the adventitial constrictions on the vein. Third thing is look for any stump of the branches that you have generously left. If you leave a large stump of the vein, that stump will act as a nidus for thrombus formation. So thrombus will form there and that will dislodge and propagate distally leading to infarction. So never allow large stumps of vein branches. Always ligate like the branch flush with the vein wall taking care not to constrict the lumen of the vein. The fourth thing one has to see is for the weaknesses in the wall of the vein, the so-called local ectasias. Local ectasias are also not good because they cause kind of eddy current, flow circulation within those weak areas. So what you can do is whenever you find a weak area on the vein, exclude those weak areas by clipping the weak area of the vein flush with the wall of the vein. So you will see an animation uh, which I made for you to understand. So by clipping, you are excluding the wall and the lumen of the weakened vein wall and thereby allowing a normal smooth flow of blood across the weakened area that has been excluded now. The fifth and most important thing is how you distain the vein. Make sure you don't distain or over distain the vein. Gently fill the vein with heparinacillin. What I use or we use is heparinacillin mixed with arterial blood kept at room temperature. We gently inflate the vein then use our fingers to keep on 
uh, distending the waning segments. So I guess this technique uh, which I have learned from the textbook of uh, cardiac surgery by Doty which I will give my reference in the YouTube channel will avoid internal damage. So if you over distend there is always a risk of internal disruption. Wherever there is internal disruption there is platelet, platelet adherence. Wherever there is platelet adherence there is microthrombi and in future occlusion. So avoid over distension. Now why should we use Safnas Venus Graft? Now Safnas Venus Graft is easily accessible point number one. It's available in plenty. You can use the whole graft vein to graft as many territories as possible. The third most important thing is the vein is a bit bigger in diameter and has a thicker wall. So you, technically it is very easy to handle the vein. The fourth thing is leg vein, especially vein in the leg, corresponds to the size of the coronaries. And that's what I read that in some of the books. So probably there will be no size mismatch as well. And fifth thing is that you can harvest it very easily. Having said that, taking care not to push and pull the vein while harvesting, taking care not to cause much of intimal disruptions while harvesting is also very important. The current recommendation for use of softness venous graft is in the presence of lima and when other arterial grafts are not suitable for grafting, that's when you use a softness venous graft. Safnas venous graft is also used for peripheral arterial grafting in the lower limb, lower and upper limb. Safnas vein is also used to reconstruct the superior vena cava. Uh, contraindications to harvest the Safnas venous graft is local area cellulitis, thrombosis of the Safnas vein, history of DVT in that limb, any venous manipulation in that limb and the established varicosities of that limb. Now one more piece is how you preserve the vein after you harvest. So there is no consensus as to how you preserve the vein but what we do in our unit is we preserve it in heparinized saline that is mixed with arterial blood maintained at room temperature. Now whenever blood is used that is used because blood has lot of buffers and I guess it will neutralize any pH. Now coming to the patency rates of the sufferness vein. At one year after CABG 10 to 20 percent of sufferness venous drafts tend to fail. From second year to fifth year, an additional 10 to 15 percent of substance venous grafts tend to fail. From sixth year to tenth year, another 20 to 25 percent of substance venous grafts will fail. Only 50 percent of the substance venous grafts are patent at the end of 10 years, and out of those, only half are angiographically normal. This is the classical description of saphenous vein patency rates in the literature. Now why is the saphenous vein patency in question? So if the saphenous vein graft occludes within the first 18 months after placing it on the heart, it's called early graft failure and the most common cause is said to be at the time of harvest and at the time of preparation of the vein. So probably there is intimal rupture, the intimal disruption or you have not handled the intima well while placing it on the heart. Those grafts which occlude after 18 months of time probably describe a late graft failure. So intimal hypoplasia and atherosclerosis are said to be the cause for those late graft failures. I guess the saphenous venous graft which has gone into disrepute was probably in the era when good statins were not available. I guess with much care the saphenous vein graft will definitely perform well with much care given at the time of harvest, preparation and, and the placement of the heart. This is my, my thought process and I am not sure how many of uh, the surgeons will concur with me. Having said that, if you have any queries or any thoughts on the way the softness wind has to be handled, please drop your comments in the comment section below. That will be helpful for all of us to learn together. If you like this video, please click the like button and subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to ring the bell just to be notified of my next video in time.